from Hollywood, the Screen Directors Playhouse. Screen Directors Playhouse, star Edward G. Robinson, production All My Sons, director Irving Reese. The Hollywood screen directors present a human tragedy. The motion picture drama, All My Sons, starring Edward G. Robinson in his original role of Joe, with Jeff Chandler as Chris. This is the tragedy of a man who sought to fashion his family into a universe but lived to see the universe become his family. Well, what do you think, Joe? The transmission will never hold. I'll work it over in the morning. Yeah, you're the boss. If you want to know, ask Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. If you want to know, ask Joe. Well, it's quitting time. You better run along. I'll worry about it. That's the boss's job in this machine shop. Okay. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Dad? Dad, are you here? Yeah, here I am, Chris. Hey, can't you tear yourself away from this place? It's not a place, Chris. It's me. This isn't the Keller Machine Works. It's your old man. Every machine, every blueprint, every nail, I made it for the family. For you, Chris. Dad, can we go back to the office? I want to talk to you. Sure, sure. Hey, you're all dressed up, Chris. For Annie, huh? <laughs> That's right, for Annie. I've got a few minutes before I meet her at the station. Well, it's a good thing you're coming back like this. Shows there's no grudge between our families. Sit down. Sit down, Chris. Now, what's the problem? Dad, I'm going to ask Aunt Diva to marry me. No. No, you can't do that, Chris. We're in love, Dad. Well, Annie is Larry's girl. She's engaged to your brother. Larry's dead. He crashed in the war. Well, there's no proof, no body, no grave. It's been no... years. He can't still be alive. Well, your mother will never believe that. Oh, mother's built Larry's memory into a shrine. Now, look here, Chris. Look, you, you've hardly seen Anne since she moved away, since, since you went to war. I saw her in Chicago last year. Yes, but after what's happened, the... The trial and her father being... I was a... brought up to next door to her. I know her best. When I think of someone for my wife, I think of Anne. Well, Chris, you'll be pronouncing your brother dead. Dad, if you and Mother won't let us be happy here, if we're shadowed over with Larry's memory, with the memory of the trial and her father's guilt, then, then I'll have to get out. Are you crazy? You've got a business here, the factory. It's a business. I'm talking about living. Yes, but this is all I know about living. The business and the family. That's all, Chris. Well, then help me to stay here. Well, all right, but don't think like that. It's only for you, the, the whole shooting match. It's for, it's for you, Chris. Hand me a towel, Kate. Yeah. Why did you build a house with two bathrooms if you must wash your hands in my kitchen sink? <laughs> I wonder how Ann Diva feels about us, Kate. Her father hates us. Mm. I don't know about her. All I know is that it isn't right, her and Chris. She's Larry's girl. Uh, Kate, uh... Larry isn't dead, Joe. He can't be dead. Well, perhaps he is, Kate. Maybe he is. And Herb uh... Diva in prison, Annie's father. They all say it's because he was your partner. Well, they know I was acquitted. They know I was homesick the day Herb shipped those faulty cylinders to the army. Well, Twenty-one planes crashed in Australia, Joe. Twenty-one. Well, all right, it's forgotten. Now, why do you have to talk about it? Well, Anne is his daughter, Joe. There might be trouble. Well, there won't be any trouble. Now, you be nice to her. Now, that's all. Be nice to her, Kate, will you? Mom, Dad, we're home. Well, I'll be nice to, to Larry's girl. In here, Chris. Say, Annie. Oh. <laughs> Annie, you're beautiful. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. That's oh, enough hugging. Annie. Oh, I'm so glad you could come. <laughs> we Annie. certainly are. Oh, wonderful. It's so wonderful oh. to be here oh, again. Wonderful oh, to have you here. Come, come. I'll show you to your room. Oh, don't take forever. I want it back. <laughs> 
Oh, my Chris, he's so happy you're here. He feels just like a brother to you. And in a way, I suppose he is. B brother? Well, I hadn't thought of it. And how is your brother, Anne? Is George a lawyer now? Oh, yes. With an office in Chicago and no clients. This is your room, Anne. It's Larry's room. But, Kate, it's just the same. His clothes, his books. Yes, dear, for when he gets back. But Larry is dead. Sometimes it's better to let things stay the way they are, Annie, and not disturb them. Not disturb them. <laughs> How is it being home again, huh? Sitting on the front steps after a good dinner? Joe, have they stopped talking yet about my father? Oh, gone and forgotten. Things are just the way they used to be at the plant. Oh, Dad, it's different with you. You were exonerated. Annie's father is still in prison. She might as well be prepared. People will talk. Well, let him talk. Would it bother me? Before the trial, they called me a murderer, and some even afterwards. There's nothing on my conscience, and I got a court order to prove it. You don't have to prove it, Dad. But my father is a murderer. Oh, no, no. Herb is a fool, but, but don't make a killer out of him. He sent out a shipment of defective cylinders, 21. There's no word bad enough for a crime like that. Chris, let's forget it. Now, both of you, listen to me. Now, sure, Herb is in jail, but uh, just, just try to see it human. Uh, just see it human. All of a sudden, a batch of cylinders comes out bad. A mistake. But it, but it ain't murder. But he shipped them to guys who wore the same uniform that Larry and I did. That his own son, George, did. Well, so my partner shipped them. He thought they'd hold up. The army screaming for deliveries, me homesick. I couldn't stop him lying on my back with a flu. I don't say he was right, but it wasn't murder. That's the way I feel, and you can tell him that, Annie, when you write to him. I don't write to him. What? Ann, he's your father. Neither does George. But why? Because 21 pilots died. Because Larry died. But that had nothing to do with Larry. Besides, we don't know for sure that... Dad, Ann's tired. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just a crazy old man, that's me. <laughs> I'll leave you two kids alone. That's what you want anyway. Good night. Good night, Joe. Night, Dad. Oh, Chris. I'm sorry I've come. Oh, no, you mustn't say that. I know your mother doesn't want me here. She's afraid of me. Afraid of you? Why? Afraid I'm going to break up the safe little world she's built around you and Joe and Larry. Come into that world, Annie. Oh, Chris. Annie. Annie, I, I love you. I want you to marry me. If you want me, Chris. If you want me. Oh, uh, Anne, it's your brother George. Long distance uh, from Springfield. Springfield? The prison. Yeah, I thought you said George and your father weren't in touch. Well, I don't understand. I... Well, there's the phone. Hello? George? Yes? What are you so excited about? No, I don't want you to come here. No, George, I... You have? But please, I can't leave George. Chris has asked me to marry him. George, I... George! What is it, Anne? He went to see Father. He's found out something new about the trial. No? Uh -huh. He's coming tomorrow. He says he's coming to take me away from here. Chris. Here on the porch, Anne. Chris, I might as well warn you. George isn't friendly. He'll talk. Wild talk. My father's innocent, Anne. It's George. He's here. Yeah. He's here. Hello, George. George. You're not going to marry him, Anne. Why not? Because his father destroyed your family. Now, look here, George. Cut it, Chris. Anne, I've been thinking. 
We turned our backs on our father. We did a terrible thing. But now I've talked to him again. And it wasn't all Dad's fault. George. Joe knew about those cylinders. He knew. That's a lie. My father was home, sick. Joe gave himself an alibi, that's all. Our father told you that? From his own mouth, and it's different than reading it in the court record, Anne. You have to believe him. Georgie! Georgie! Oh. Hello, Kate. It's been so long. Let me look at you. Oh, Georgie! But you look so old. You look fine, Kate. And I still cook fine, too. Wait till you see the dinner no, I've made. No, no, I'm not staying, well, Kate. Of course you're staying. Oh, I know you, Georgie. Trying to make us believe you hate us. But you can't, Georgie. Not in your heart. I, I don't know. I... Please stay, George. Nobody can resist, Kate. Well, all right. I am kind of hungry. Oh, George, I'm glad. Come, we'll go in. Joe will be home any minute now. Then, then we'll eat. Come on, come on, George. Eat. <laughs> Come on, eat. Oh, I can't, Joe. Not another bite. <laughs> oh, my Joe, he's always hungry. Uh, sure, I'm a hard-working man. <laughs> Too much to do at the plant. The plant's going very well, George. Well, what does he care about factories? He's a lawyer. I'll uh, tell you what, George, uh, you come back here to live and I'll talk to Judge Collins. Have him take you in. Yeah, and I'll find you a girl. And we'll make you laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I really came here trying to hate you. But I can't. You're, you're all so wonderful. Just like I remembered you. And you all look so fine and well. Oh, Dad's still strong as an ox. Well, sure. Too busy to find time to be sick. Oh, Joe hasn't been to a doctor as long as I can remember. <laughs> Pass the potatoes, Kate. <laughs> you know, I've never been sick a day in my whole life. <laughs> Is that a fact, Joe? Uh, sure. Except for that time that... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, except for that time that I had the flu. Never sick a day, you said. Not a day. George. But you forget the day your partner shipped defective airplane parts to the army. Now, that's enough out of you. Ask the court what happened that day if you're so curious. Ask the jury. And you almost had me fooled with your talk. Your fine family talk. Come on, Anne. Let's get out of here. Chris. Well, Anne? I'm going with him, Chris. Your mother's right. It's better sometimes to let things stay the way they are and not disturb them. Dad. What are you staring at me like that for? Never sick a day in your life. You, you said it. Well, I forgot about it. If it I... ever turned out that you were lying, I'd kill you. What kind of a thing is that to say? What kind I'd of... I'd kill you. Well, listen, I don't have to defend myself to you or anybody. You understand? Not to you or nobody. I'm clear, see? The jury said so. Nothing can touch me. Nothing. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of All My Sons. Starring Edward G. Robinson as Joe, with Jeff Chandler as Chris. Mr. Tiva. Hello, Chris. You can have five minutes with the prisoner. Thanks. I, I had to see you. It's about Anne and me. I know. George told me. He convinced her my father's guilty. What do you want of me? The truth, Mr. Deaver. Free us. Let us be happy. I want you to tell me he's not guilty. If you want the truth, I'll tell it to you. That's all I want. The truth. Now, we were in the midst of all that war business, Chris. It was the day before the cylinders were shipped. All right, all right, Herb. So about you, some of this came out bad. Well, that's all. We're finished, Joe, through. We can't ship them, can't meet the contract. We lose the business. All right, so we take the rap. Or ship them. Ship them? How can we, Joe? Uh, smart enough. Nobody makes a perfect product. But the cylinders, will they be all right? Well, they'll have to be, or, or we're broke. Broke, Joe. I got every cent in the world tied up here. I've got more than money tied up in it. My flesh and blood. My heart, my brain. Forty years of it. Forty years. 
from a junk shop to this. The main thing now is to survive, Herb. That's it, to survive. It's a crime to ship those cylinders. Well, it's a crime if we get caught. I say ship them out of here. I say they're okay. Ship them. To survive, Herb, to survive. Go on, Mr. Deaver. The next day, Joe was at home, Chris, sick. I didn't ship the cylinders, and not from any high moral purpose, but because I was frightened. And then the army officers came. I had to phone your father. I had to talk to you. Hello? Joe, it's Herb. Yeah? They want the cylinders now. I'm scared, Joe. I can't take the responsibility. Can't you come in? Well, I'm sick, you know that. And who says you have to take the responsibility? I'll take it. Full responsibility. I don't know, Joe. I don't know. Full responsibility. So ship them. Ship them, I say. You said all that in court, Mr. Deva. They didn't believe you. You can take responsibility on the telephone. In court, you can always deny it. Oh, I... I don't believe... Your father is guilty, Chris. We both are. That's why you must take Annie and go away. Forget us. No. No, he's my father. I know him. He he couldn't do that. You've brooded over this until you believe it yourself. Chris, do the men at the plant still say, if you want to know, ask Joe? Yes, Kate. Can I come in? If you wish. You have nothing to say to me, Annie. You're not welcome here. Kate, listen to me, please. I've thought it all over, and I'm sure now it isn't better to leave things the way they are, Kate. Sometimes they've got to be disturbed. What do you want of us? Why have you come back into our lives? I want to marry Chris. That's impossible. Not while Larry is still alive. We love each other. And Larry isn't coming back, Kate. He crashed off the coast of China on February 9th, 1944. There's no proof. You say that, but not even the army has proof. I have proof, Kate. No. A letter from Larry to me. Written the day he died. A letter from Larry? Read it, Kate. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now you know. I wanted to keep it from you. Oh, Andy, Joe mustn't see this letter ever, ever. Well, you're back. I'm back, Dad. What's the matter with you? Dad, is it really true what they say? If you want to know, ask Joe. (laughs) Sure it's true. I know every nail in the joint. Then I want you to tell me something. Well, sure, anything. Those cylinders. How did they get shipped out without your knowing about it? Oh, so you're on that, too. Why don't you go ahead and say I'm guilty? Say, I did it. Go ahead. I don't want you to be guilty. I want you to be innocent. I saw Herb Deaver, Dad. So? So you listened to his lies. My own son. Dad, you owe it to me to explain what happened. I've got a right to know. Oh, I'm tired of explaining. I don't have to explain. Not to you, do you hear? You're my son. You're in it with me. You eat my food, wear my clothes, live in my home. I don't have to explain to you. Dad. All right. If I'm guilty, you're guilty, too. Understand? You're guilty, too. You knew. You knew all the time. Well, I'm in business. I had to keep the shop open. Now what could I do? Wash 40 years down the drain? Let him take my life away because I made a mistake in the cylinders? They had to be shipped. Why? Why did they have to be shipped? Well, Chris, 
Chris, I did it for you to, to give you something for me. Me? What kind of man oh, are you? Chris. Don't you have a heart? I, I had to hold on to the business. Don't you live in the world? For the family, Chris. Don't you think about people? For the family. I hate you. Chris, it was for you. I hate you. Chris. I hate you. Chris. I hate you. Chris. Chris. Joe, maybe you should go upstairs and lie down. I thought I had a family. What happened to my family, Kate? Joe, I, I've been thinking. If Chris comes back... Oh, he'll come back. He'll come back, all right. Then, Joe, if you sit down with him, explain yourself. My son? And my own son? You ought to make it clear to him that you know what a terrible thing you've done. Then maybe... Maybe... Maybe he'll forgive me. Hm. Well, what have I done to be forgiven for? Provided for my family? Made money? Forgive me, huh? Hm. I could live on a quarter a day myself, but I've got a family, so I did what I could. I... There's something bigger than the family, Joe. No, I'm his father and he's my son. Nothing is bigger than that, understand? <gasps> Joe, it's Chris. He's come home. Hello, Mom. I want to talk to you, Dad. Well, that's fine. Because I want to talk to you. I've just been with Annie. She's outside now. She gave me something. Annie? For Annie, you turn your back on your father. If he's a murderer. So what do you want me to do? Tell me, Chris. I'll do it. Throw away my money? All right, you take it. Throw it down the sewer. I'm an old man, a, a dead man. Nothing is mine. Well, what do you want? It's not what I want. Well, shall I go to the police? Tell them to put me in jail? Will that make you happy? Will that do it? Well, come on, talk. Tell me. No, that's not enough. That wouldn't make you suffer enough. Because you still don't understand what you've done. Yeah, I know what I've done. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry because my son isn't worth it. And he gave me this letter. Chris, Chris, don't do it. It don't was written by Larry, his oh, last letter. Go on, read it. Read it and then tell yourself what you must do. Oh, no. Letter from Larry? Read it, Dad. Read it. It was written during the trial. Oh, Chris, no. My dear Anne, it's impossible to put down the things I feel, but I've got to tell you something. The papers have told us all about the plant, about our fathers. I'm ashamed because now I'm alone. Because our fathers have betrayed us all. I can't face the other men. I don't know how to tell you, Annie, but somehow I must atone for what my father has done. Today I'm going out on a mission and I shall see to it that I don't come back. I want you to forgive me, Annie, but it's the only way I know how to pay for the, his crime. Dad, do you understand what this letter means? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I had to show it to you. You know? Oh, sure, sure, kid, I know. <laughs> it's with you now. I'm leaving with Annie. Oh, Chris, my Chris. I'm sorry, you don't know how sorry. Goodbye, Chris. Goodbye. Now, Larry was our son, Kate. Our son. You paid for it. Larry paid for it. What more can you do? No. No, it's no use, Kate. Sure, he was my son. But I think to him... They were all my sons. I guess they were. All my sons. I think I'll go upstairs. Chris... We'd better go. In a minute, Anne. I, I want to look once more at the house. 
the house my father built. You still love him, don't you? He's my father. Come on in. Your father said to take you away to forget the past. We will, Chris. No, no. No, I'll always remember. Dad, the hurt in his eyes because the universe poked its fingers through his picket fence. What he learned, we'll all have to learn. All of us. Everybody. What was that, Chris? A shot. Or a backfire? No, no, a shot. It was the sound of the universe. Oh, Chris. Do you think... He was my father, Ann. He was my father. We better go back. No, no, we can't go back. Not now or ever. Walk, Ann. Just walk. And pray. Pray. Edward G. Robinson and Jeff Chandler will return in just a moment. Next week, as always, another great star recreates one of his most fascinating roles on Screen Director's Playhouse. Our story is Call Northside 777. And our star is Jimmy Stewart with Screen Director Henry Hathaway. Now, here again are Edward G. Robinson and Jeff Chandler. Okay, Jeff, the hard part is over. Relax. <laughs> I feel as if I just stepped out of an emotional straitjacket. What do we do now, Eddie? Well, bring on the director. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like you to meet the man who brought all my sons to the screen. The director of such splendid films as The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer and Enchantment, Irving Reese. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Hello, Jeff. Now, what's the matter? You're a little tense, Irving. Oh, it's just my reaction to your fine performance, Eddie, <laughs> and the microphone. <laughs> and uh, what do you have to be nervous about microphones? You know, uh, Jeff, Irving Reese is one of the real pioneers of radio. Oh, what field, Mr. Reese? Writer, producer, engineer? Well, as you can see, practically everything but acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't say that. You know, Irving wrote for me when I used to do the uh, Big Town show. And oh? What a tough boss I was, huh? Irving? That's right. <laughs> Scared me right into motion pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, as a rising young screen star, what do you think about radio? Oh, me? Uh, I think I've been around microphones ever since I left school. Well, what do you know? Three old radio hands. Yeah. Well, what are we all so nervous about? Television. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Jeff. Irving. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. And good night to you, Edward G. Robinson, Jeff Chandler, and Irving Reese. Remember next week, Jimmy Stewart and screen director Henry Hathaway. All My Sons was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Studios, who soon will release Baghdad, a Technicolor production starring Maureen O'Hara and Paul Christian. Edward G. Robinson will soon be seen in the London Films production, My Daughter Joy. Jeff Chandler can now be seen with Dana Andrews, Marta Torrin, and Stephen McNally in Sword in the Desert a Universal International Picture. Irving Reese's latest production is the 20th Century Fox Technicolor musical Dancing in the Dark, starring William Powell. Included in tonight's cast were Helen Andrews, Irene Tedrow, Norman Field, Jack Edwards, Clark Gordon, and Dan Riss. All My Sons, based on the play by Arthur Miller, was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next week when we present Screen Director's Playhouse, star Jimmy Stewart, production call Northside 777, director Henry Hathaway. What's on NBC Sunday? This Sunday, George Jessel and Celeste Holm are the guests of Hollywood Calling. Together, they'll place phone calls to every part of this nation and they may call you to win a wonderful prize and crack the $26,000 jackpot. Be sure to hear Hollywood Calling, Sunday on NBC. It might be your turn to win. Next, it's Bill Stern and the Sports Newsreel on NBC.